Hey YouTube, John Hammond, Pico CTF 2018. Buffer overflow one. Okay, now you're cooking. This time you can overflow the buffer and return the flag function in this program. Sweet. We're given the program and the source code. We can download it. I've already W get it, but we'll have to run it on the shell server so we can actually receive their, their flag file just as we've done before. So let's go check out what we've downloaded here. We have the source file, so let's go vuln.c, check it out. It will define some macros here to kind of have a buffer size and flag size. We have a win function that will just print out the flag file. Okay, looks like that's how we can get the flag. And the vuln function is just running gets, which we know is a very dangerous function. We can check out man gets if we wanted to. Man gets. And it says never use this function because it has significant security problems. Sets so a buffer up, raises our privileges so we can run on the server and get the flag, and then it runs the vulnerable function. So it'll jump to an address, and that's pretty cool. You can see this gets return address thing. So that's neat. Let's go ahead and try and run this function, see if we can work with it. Let's mark it as executable. Vuln, please enter your string. Awesome. And it says, okay, time to return, and it will jump back to where it expected to return to in the program. I could write please subscribe or whatever stupid stuff, but we do want to try and overflow this, right? Uh, given the actual buffer size, so 32 characters. You can see I entered a crap ton of A's and it says, okay, time to return, fingers crossed, we're jumping to this location. So if you didn't have this output, you could run D message and then actually get the very last couple lines of it. And you can see where your psych fault is happening and how much you've actually overflowed EIP or the instruction pointer. So you're overflowing the return address, as you've seen on the stack. We break through uh, the local variables that we're receiving. We're going to end up overriding EBP and we're going to end up writing, overriding the return address. So EBP plus four on the stack, on the stack frame. So once we have a return address controllable, that way we can jump to whatever function we want. Let's so let's go ahead and try and run to and try and return to the win function. So first we need to know where that function is. And I'm going to use readelf tech s to just view symbols on this binary here. And we can see we do have a function called a win. And it's at this location. So just as you saw when we ran it when we ran Vuln without anything big, and we'll just jump to a location back to main. Uh, or location where we were in main, we can also jump to the very start of win. And it's the, that's exact same kind of style of where the constant is in the binary. So we can just set that in little endian format and then go ahead and try to actually jump to it. But we need it in little endian format, right? So you can do this with Python or you could just kind of do it by hand. But Python with the struct module, which is installed by default, you can use struct.pack with a little endian, so less than sign and a capital I for integer, and then you'll supply this as a hex number, and you'll get some information like that looks kind of random when you have it displayed in the terminal, but that's because it's just hex bytes. So if I print out the representation of it with repr, you can see it's the backslash x and location in, in hex. So that's cool, right? Let's go ahead and try and find where our offset is or where we can go ahead and overflow this and actually run the win function. So we would go ahead and Python text C, where's that print statement? Let's also do print A times, let's see, we know our buffer is like 32, so let's go maybe like 36 or 40. And let's add on that string. And let's pipe that into Vuln. And it says, okay, we're jumping to this location. Maybe we didn't override it just enough. 44. And we jumped straight to the location that we wanted to. And we know that because it's trying to cat out the flag file. It's, since we're testing locally, if we wanted to, we could do... We could create our own fake flag, and I do this a lot. I'll be like, John, please subscribe, or like, John wins, or like, John got the challenge, or whatever, and, and we will print out our local fake flag. So that's a cool way to do it. Now that we know we have this payload that will work, let's go ahead and try and connect to the server. So what I'm going to do is actually create a simple SSH script that will get me to where I want to be every time, and I won't have to try and like SSH the same command every time. I just want 2018... Pico shell, and let's create in the above directory just an ssh.sh script. 
I still want to be able to enter my password. Whoa. I didn't want that. I wanted this. SSH John Hammond YouTube there. And let's keep this back in our clipboard. Mark that as executable. And now that we can connect to it, we'll enter our password. We're logged in. Let's get this just kind of in our directory or just output. So when I go back to get to the actual problems page, I can copy and paste it pretty easily. Let's get to buffer overflow one and we'll get to this location on the file system. We'll just copy and paste it. So let's CD over there, right? Now let's run the same command that we had. It says, okay, time to return, fingers crossed. We have overflowed and we've told the return address to overflow and instead be our win function. And it pumps out the flag because we've called the win function just like that. Addresses are easy, slick. Let's do that, nanoflag.txt, save it. <laughs> let's remove our cheesy please subscribe file. Submit it. And that challenge is now complete. What a win. Let's mark that as complete. Offer flow one. Complete. Sweet. Uh, I am just going to solve the next challenge because it's pretty simple. Um, it's the identical, same thing, like same solution as the last Hertz challenge. Hertz is another substitution cipher, right? Just as we saw in the last one. So let's make directory Hertz 2. Hertz 2. Go ahead and netcat to it. Get this string. And we can, again, just slap this in quip quip. And it works just fine for us. We will get the flag pretty easily. Substitution ciphers are easy. If you wanted to, we can get every other part of it and mark those at, like, say what that is. And then it should know that the rest of that string, it should be able to figure out what those question marks are because the clues will allow us to just say Pico CTF substitution ciphers are too easy. Let's solve it now. And then now that it's able to figure out all those letters, it can get the rest of the flag. Kind of a cool trick. Stop refreshing so I can actually highlight this. Oh my goodness. I hope you guys are having fun. <laughs> I hope these are entertaining as a, as educate as entertaining as they are educational because I'm an idiot. That's all. All right, let's do nanoflag.txt, save it, and we're good. Hertz 2, complete. And that's that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of Buffer Overflow, some cool stuff. I've done those a lot before in Ryan CTF, Ryan Nicholson CTF, and other competitions. So there are plenty of videos on it, but that's how we could just run through it for Pico CTF. All right, quick shout out for the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I can't say it enough. $1 a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. Thanks so much for watching. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server, link in the description. It's a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. Hang out with me, a bunch of other cool people, learn a lot of stuff, and just kind of get engaged in the scene and the community. Thanks. Love you guys. Hope to see you in the next video. Hope to see you on Patreon. Take it easy.